How about this? day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it, even if it's not 75 and sunny. But at least that 18 inches of snow they were telling us we were going to get didn't happen, so we can be grateful for that. I'd like to welcome everybody to this morning's service, both the people in attendance here and the people watching us on YouTube and Facebook and the people who may be watching us later. This is the seventh Sunday of the season of Epiphany, the last Sunday of Epiphany. This Wednesday is Ash Wednesday, which marks the start of the Easter season, the 40 days of Lent. Just think, in 40 days it will be Easter, and the sun will be shining and the grass will be green. The first day of Lent is Ash Wednesday, and we will be having an Ash Wednesday service, 7 o'clock in the evening here. So that will be happening. We will have a, a wonderful day today. One of the privileges of wearing a jacket and a tie is getting to hear the choir practice. And if the choir is half as good as they sounded when I was listening, they will knock your socks off. It's not the last time I'm going to say knock your socks off today. This is the last day for donations for flood buckets and the last Sunday of February. The last Sunday of February is Global UMCOR Sunday, and Georgine is coming up to share with us a few words about UMCOR and a short video about the work of UMCOR and how your funds are used. Georgine. Oh, there she is. Good morning. I'm Georgine Stefan. I represent our mission team, and today I brought along a little buddy. This is the UMCOR uh, United Methodist Care Bear. He represents Volunteers in Mission and the Committee on Relief. You can see the United Methodist emblem with the cross and the flame. And uh, he just represents the mission work that's undertaken by the United Methodist Church. He wanted to say hi and thank you. Um, our mission team uh, would like to thank you for your support of the flood bucket and hygiene kit drive over the past two months. Uh, you can see the tally there. We've almost met our goal. We wanted to uh, provide enough supplies to fill 100 flood buckets and 100 hygiene kits. And um, 
there'll be an announcement shortly as to an assembly date to get those ready to take off to uh, the distribution center. So again, we thank you so much. Um, as we turn our calendar to March, um, we are focusing on Umcore Sunday, and that provides the financial support to underwrite the administrative costs of doing the business of mission work that's undertaken by the United Methodist Church. Um, each March, we, along with other United Methodists worldwide, observe Umcore Sunday and participate in this one great hour of sharing. This offering lays the foundation of relief and hope to alleviate human suffering around the world. But what makes UMCOR so special is the promise that 100% of the funds intended for a specific project go to that particular project, 100%. And by supporting UMCOR Sunday, those administrative costs are covered and that promise is kept. Um, UMCOR continues to be in the forefront of relief efforts nationally and worldwide. It has done so since 1940, uh, for the past 80 years, actually, a little more than 80 years. Currently, UMCOR is collaborating with local church and community leaders in Kentucky and Tennessee following the aftermath of the December tornadoes. Uh, you can see the U.S. disaster relief map. I highlight so many of the areas in our country alone that are affected by extreme weather, uh, storms, wildfires. Uh, but no, the UMCOR remains even after the news cameras are gone. And they're helping individuals and communities rebuild, recover by uh, providing volunteer training, emergency grants, relief supplies, including all those flood buckets, and uh, long-term rebuilding. If you want to go on the UMCOR website, it's full of their current endeavors, so you can always check that out. I do have a little brief video to share with you, uh, just entitled, Did You Know? And it tells you a little bit about UMCOR. Long-term sustainable development. U.S. and international disaster relief, global migration, and global health. As followers of Jesus Christ, we are called to respond with extravagant grace. Through the United Methodist Committee on Relief, we are able to... Did you know, when you donate to the UMCOR Sunday offering, you support long-term sustainable development, U.S. and international disaster relief, global migration, and global health. As followers of Jesus Christ, we are called to respond with extravagant grace. Through the United Methodist Committee on Relief, we are able to make a difference in the lives of communities and individuals whose lives have been upset by storms, wars, fires, displacement, and climate change. This offering underwrites UMCOR's cost of doing business, allowing UMCOR to keep the promise that 100% of any gift to a specific UMCOR project will go toward that project, not administrative costs. UMCOR specializes in solutions that help people become self-reliant. Help us be a source of help and hope for those in need. Your gift helps UMCOR stay until recovery is complete. Give in person, by mail, or online at umc.org slash ssgive. Thank you, Alicia. Um, in summary, connection is at the core. Connecting the United Methodist Church with people and congregations, partnering with others engaged in God's global work, of relief ministry and helping others in need. Our March 6 communion offering will be directed to UMCOR Sunday and donations can be made throughout the month of March. And there will be UMCOR um, offering envelopes in the pews as well. So again, uh, we thank you for your caring, your generosity for those served by UMCOR. It's a blessing to those in need near and far and we really appreciate your help. Thank you.
it, it is Global UMCOR Sunday in the United Methodist Church, but I'd like to introduce you to some United Methodists who are not celebrating UMCOR Sunday this Sunday. If you could bring up that first picture. I'll start with the couple on the left. They are both pastors, and he is the district superintendent for the Ukraine-Moldova Provisional Annual Conference. That's what they call districts in other countries. He is Oleg Starbodets and his wife, Julia. They are co-pastors for the Kiev United Methodist Church. As you may have heard, um, their congregation may be having trouble attending church. How about that second picture for a second? Make it big so that everybody can see it at home, too. That, uh, that's, that's an old picture. It was taken on Thursday. And if you're following the news about Ukraine, um, the missiles have gotten a bit better. But that's what missiles in the middle of the street look like. Uh, bring the people back up again. Actually, many of the people at the Kiev United Methodist Church are in church. The church has been serving as a refuge for not just the congregation members who can make it there, but the people in their neighborhood. Um, and there are other Methodist church in Kiev and the other cities, and the words coming out is that they are doing the same thing as good Methodists, as good Christians should do. The person on the right... Bishop Edward Tigay, he's the resident bishop of the Eurasia Episcopal area. He and his wife live in Moscow. Naturally, Bishop Tigay must watch what he says, although if you've seen the news again, there's quite a bit of uh, dissent going on and people marching in the streets. His fellow bishop, Bishop Kristen Alstead of the Nordic and Baltic Episcopal area, has shared a letter with the greatest, Greater United Methodist Church. I'd like to share that with you now, and let me point out it's dated Thursday of this week, so it may not reflect everything that's happened up to now. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. John 14, 27. There is war in Europe. Russia has invaded Ukraine, which is a free, independent democracy. War and violence are evil and always entail considerable human costs. The Christian message points to the path of reconciliation and never to war and violence as a solution to conflicts. In the face of this evil, we pray for a logic different from the one based on geopolitical competition. We pray for a change of hearts and minds of leaders. We pray for de-escalation and dialogue instead of violence and war. The social principles of the Methodist Church say, we deplore war and urge the peaceful settlement of all disputes among nations. From the beginning, the Christian conscience has struggled with the harsh realities of violence and war, for these evils clearly frustrate God's loving purposes for humankind. We yearn for the day when there will be no more war and people will live together in peace and justice. Our central conference consists of Nordic, Baltic, and Eurasian countries including Russia and Ukraine. The Christian church is not nationalistic, and our relations with our brothers and sisters in other countries are not limited by nationality or culture. We have deep relations with Methodists in Ukraine and in Russia, and though we are influenced by our culture and the political realities, we must never allow this to hinder or break our unity in Christ. We stand with the United Methodists in Ukraine in prayer for protection, reconciliation, and peace. We pray for pastors, leaders, and congregations in the United Methodist Church in Ukraine. May God grant that their witness of re reconciliation and peace will bring strength and hope to the Ukrainian people. We pray for Bishop Edward Kige, Bishop of both Russia and Ukraine. May God give him the wisdom and grace that he needs in his ministry and leadership under these challenging conditions. In the Nordic and Baltic Episcopal area, Norway, Finland, Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania all have borders with Russia. And in addition, Latvia and Lithuania have borders with Belarus. The Baltic states in particular, the invasion of Ukraine causes great concern. 
The United Methodists in the Nordic countries stand with the Methodists in Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania in prayer for protection and peace. May the church's testimony of reconciliation and peace in Christ offer hope and strength to the people in the Baltic country. In the coming week, we will enter the season of Lent, which in the church is a time for prayer and soul searching. Our call on all our congregations to intercede for the people of Ukraine and for the leaders in the world who have the power to bring an end to war. I call on our congregations to pray and fast for reconciliation and peace in the world. May God, in his grace, open our eyes to the things that make for peace. May he protect us all from the escalation and spreading of war, and may we follow him on his path of truth and peace. May Christ have mercy on us all. Christian Allstead. Let us pray. Lord, it seems so long ago that we heard your words at Jesus' baptism. You reminded us that he is your beloved son with whom you are well pleased. Again today, we hear your words so that we are to listen to him, to pay attention. Open our hearts this day, Lord. Open the hearts of people around the world. Open the hearts of our politicians. Open the hearts of the suffering. Open the hearts of the persecuted. Open our hearts this day, Lord to hear the words of Jesus, to follow in his footsteps, and to serve you. For we ask this in Christ's name. Amen. Dr. Weiss.
Our call to worship is found in the hymnal on pages 89 and 820. We can read from the hymnal or the words will be up on the screen. Are they speaking it or am I? I'm speaking. Okay. Be exalted, O God, above all the heavens. Let your glory over all the earth be found. The Lord reigns. Let the people tremble. The Lord sits enthroned upon the cherubim. Let the earth quake. Let them praise your great and wondrous name. Mighty ruler, lover of justice, you have established equity. Extol the Lord our God, worship at the Lord's footstool. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory over all the earth be found. Moses and Aaron were among God's priests. Samuel also was among those who called on God's name. They kept God's testimonies and the statutes God gave them. Extol the Lord our God and worship at his holy mountain. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory over all the earth be found. I'd like to do something just a little different today. Um, in the 1960s, the composer Leonard Bernstein had a series of television shows called The uh, Young People's Guide to the Orchestra. Uh, I, that gave me an idea. Why not do The Young People's Guide to the Worship Service to explain what we're doing here and why we're doing it. So if I could have the young people come up, I'll tell you what's going on. All right, I remember who I forgot to tell what was going on. If you'd like to light the candles, I'd appreciate that. This is, this is like a family gathering, okay? And the family gathering starts out like every other ga family gathering. We start with the family news. We start with the family news about the service on Wednesday night, about UMCOR, about our fellow brothers and sisters in the Ukraine who are having trouble. We pray, and Dr. Weiser gives us some beautiful music. And we often see the word breeze on the screen. Mornings are busy times. Hurry up, get dressed, brush your teeth, wash your face, get dressed, come on, eat breakfast, go on, hurry up, get your books. Yeah. That's what it's like when you go to school. It doesn't get any better when you get to be a grown-up. So what we do is we relax because when we get the wiggle worm, <sighs> breathing helps us, oh, you're doing great. Breathing helps us to slow down and to think about God. Lighting the candles. Well, our theme for the day is light. We're talking about the glory of God and the light of Christ. If you want to take those back and come join us, that would be fine. Those candles represent the light of Christ in our life, and they serve as a reminder that where two or more are gathered in his name, we are here. When we're happy, we sing. When we go to a birthday party, everybody sings happy birthday. When you watch a football game, everybody sings, oh, the bills make me want to shout, kick my... You know, people sing when they're happy. We're happy here. 
So we sing. No, we're not doing a victory dance. <laughs> we're happy to be here and to be loved by God, so we sing our opening hymn. One of the other themes that we're talking about besides light today is that worship isn't just for a guy in a suit or some people sitting in the back or people over the age of 21, but everybody can join in worship. So I, I would like a volunteer to read something for me. Would you like to... Can, can you read it loud enough? You have to have your glasses. You, have to have a glass yeah, you, have, you don't have your glasses, do you? Okay, here we go. Wait. I'll read it. His eyes are drifting. Please stand if you are able and join in our singing for our opening hymn. Number 585 in the hymnal, This Little Light of Mine. This little light of mine. Got, wait, 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 wait. They got to stand up. <laughs> They, they got to stand up. This little light of mine, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it Everywhere I go, everywhere I go, I'm going to let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm going to let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm going to let it shine, let it shine. Under a bushel, hide it under a bushel. No, I'm gonna let it shine. Hide it under a bushel. No, I'm gonna let it shine. 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 Anybody, anybody can do. Please be seated for just a second. Anybody can do worship. Anybody can lead worship. Anybody can get together with other people and lead worship. You don't have to be old. You don't have to wear a suit. <laughs> you, just, you just have to love God. What comes next in the service? Anybody remember? The praise. The praise team. You're right. The team. They're going to come on up, and, and they're going to praise God. That's uh, expressing gratitude and respect towards God, especially in songs. So why don't you go back to your seats for now? And we will gather and praise God and pray. And we have been praising God and praising his name already. So um, I'm going to ask you to stand again since we're going to be praising God. Um, we've got a couple of um, pieces here that I know you're all familiar with. And I want to thank the children for leading us into this time together of praise and worship. Um, I encourage you everyone to not just uh, save your praise and worship time for Sunday mornings. Um, every time I get in the car, I have a station that I turn to, doesn't matter if I'm going a short way or a long trip, and it's praise music, it grounds me, it just gets you going for the day. There are Christian uh, radio stations, if you get Sirius or Pandora or Spotify, you can find the Christian sta uh, station, the, the Christian themes and um, they're glorifying, they get your heart right. So I encourage you not to just do it today, and we love having you sing with us, but um, during the week also. Thank you.
you. There's a, a prayer that I actually use as the, on the desktop of my cell phone. God, right now I feel weary and worn. There are things in my life and other people's lives that make me want to give up. Please help me, Lord. Give me your strength to endure so that at the proper time I can look back and see how you provided for me, for us, in this season. Draw our hearts closer to yours. I mean, where do I start? I can start in the Ukraine with at least 150,000 people who have left and become refugees and more waiting hours at the border. I can worry about war. I can, I can look at the list of our prayer concerns among us here. It almost seems as if no one is untouched between the people who are in need of healing, such as Jessica, <sighs> Marilyn Tracy's sister, Reverend Ricker, who will be facing the doctor a couple of times, my son, who's looking at a bone marrow transplant whenever they decide to get around to it, <sighs> Sandy Cliver, Becca, Tracy Papaya, Sister Sherry is being treated for abdominal mass. Kate Huff, struggling with cancer. Pastor Nettie, Avion is getting ready for a surgical procedure. Karen Matheson is getting ready for a surgical procedure. Gail Short has had a successful hip replacement. Of course, we miss Jen Osborne Coy, who continues to recuperate from cancer. June's mother, is suffering and in pain. June needs the strength to be a good daughter to her mother as well as her mother. It's nice to know that with all of this weight, we have a gracious and loving God. Let us pray. Oh, glorious God of amazing grace, we, your people, come before you today to acknowledge all that you have done for us, to, to, to share our thanks that we can be here. We are fed, we are clothed, we are healthy, we are free to pray for you. You have blessed us with many, many things, and for this we thank you. Open our eyes. Open our eyes, Father to see this and all of the things you have provided for us. We thank you for Jesus Christ who came down here to suffer, to die, to show us the way and to open up the gates of relationship with you. We thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit to empower us, to give us vision, to give us inspiration, to give us strength. 
Lord, give us the strength of your spirit to represent you in this world. Almighty God, I, I, I lift before you the, the lists of concerns that we share and the list of concerns for people that we hold dear, that we don't always mention. I'd like to ask this opportunity, Father, to give all of us an opportunity to raise a name or names in prayer for their personal concerns and the concerns of their friends. God, we are grateful for your love. Even if we cannot understand the breadth and depth of your love, we thank you for knowing and caring. We thank you that we can take our concerns to you and that you will hear them with a gracious ear, that you will look down upon your people and bless us. We thank you for strength for this to make it this far and strength for the week ahead so that we may praise and love you we thank you for all of this in the name of jesus christ your only begotten son our savior and lord amen Next, I'm going to ask Michaela's dad to come on up and share some stories with us. Here's what I want you to listen for. In the first story, we hear about Moses and how Moses was such a good friend to God that a little bit of God rubbed off on him. In the second story, Jesus takes Peter, James, and John to the top of a mountain, and what happens at the top of that mountain will knock their socks off. <clears throat> Told you I was going to say that more than once today. Remember, the theme of the day is light. So listen for the light and the light of Christ in both stories. Good morning. Uh, we'll be reading from the book of Exodus, chapter 34, verses 29 through 35. Moses came down from Mount Sinai. As he came down from the mountain with the two tablets of the covenant in his hand, Moses did not know that the skin of his face shone because he had been talking with God. When Aaron and all the Israelites saw Moses, the skin of his face was shining, and they were afraid to come near him. But Moses called to them, and Aaron and all the leaders of the congregation returned to him. And Moses spoke with them. Afterwards, all the Israelites came near, and he gave them in commandment all that the Lord had spoken with him on Mount Sinai. When Moses had finished speaking with them, he put a veil on his face. But whenever Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he would take the veil off. Until he came out, and he came out and told the Israelites what had been commanded. The Israelites would see the face of Moses, that the skin of his face was shining, and Moses would put the veil on his face again until he went to speak with the Lord. Stand if you're able for a reading from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 9, verses 28 through 36. Now about eight days 
After these sayings, Jesus took with him Peter and John and James and went up on the mountain to pray. While he was praying, the appearance of his face changed and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly they saw two men, Moses and Elijah, talking to him. They appeared in glory and were speaking of his departure, which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. Now Peter and his companions were weighed down with sleep, but since they had awakened, they saw his glory and the two men who stood with him. Just as they were leaving him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Not knowing what he was saying, while he was saying this, a cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were terrified as they entered the cloud. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my son, my chosen. Listen to him. When the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone, and they kept silent, and in those days told no one any of the things they have seen. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Come on, back up. Yes, you. Well, them, but you can come up. You can be an honorary youth. I'm, I, uh, I'm here too. Oh, no, I am, but that's a whole nother story. Okay, quick test. Was I right about both stories? Did you hear about light in both stories? Yeah. yeah. There's one more story that I'll tell after you leave. And after I leave, I, after you leave, I always joke it's the boring part. Pastor Nettie gives you candy to eat, and they all have to sit here and listen to me talk for a long time. I don't have any candy, sorry. God's word is your candy. Yeah. That sounds that sounds fine. Um, I, I I I laugh because there's another. I just want to share it with you. There's another verse in the Bible when Mark talks about Jesus's clothes turning white. It says that they're so white that no bleach could ever make them that white. So that was kind of like really amazing. And then the cloud came and they were terrified and whoa, that knocked their socks off. So that's why we do what we do and what the plan is for today. There's just one or two more things I'd like to do. I'd like everybody to stand, at least up here, and let's join in with the rest of the congregation and say the prayer that Jesus taught to us through his disciples, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, What we usually do now is called passing the peace. We look at each other and we bless them and wish the peace of God upon them and the peace of God among you too. And I'd like to thank you for helping to lead worship this morning and go and enjoy Children's Church. And we can pass the peace and wish blessings upon each other. Any other family gathering, there's things you don't talk about until the children leave, and I just thought I'd pass one, thought I'd pass one along. Um, Vladimir Putin has put nuclear and conventional Russian forces at high alert. So, I, I mean, it's hard enough for grown-ups to sleep. 
I don't want the kids to know that. <sighs> One more reading. Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, chapter 3, verse 12 through chapter 4, verse 2. Since then we have such a hope, we act with great boldness. Not like Moses, who put a veil over his face to keep the people of Israel from gazing at the end of glory that was being set aside. But their minds were hardened. Indeed, to this very day, when they hear the reading of the Old Testament, Old Covenant, that same veil is still there, since only in Christ is it set aside. Indeed, to this very day, whenever Moses is read, a veil lies over their minds. But when one turns to the Lord, the veil is removed. Paul repeating it twice for emphasis, not me. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And all of us, with unveiled faces, seeing the glory of the Lord, as though reflected in a mirror, are being transformed into the same image, from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord, the Spirit. Therefore, since it is by God's mercy that we are engaged in this ministry, we do not lose heart. We have renounced the shameful things that one hides. We refuse to practice cunning or to falsify God's word. But by the open statement of truth, we commend ourselves to the conscience of everyone in the sight of God. May the words of the scripture we have heard speak to us. <sighs> Open the mouth of the speaker. Give him the words. Open the ears of the listeners that they may hear. That we may all be blessed. And come to know you a little bit better. Since then we have such a hope. Since then what? The word since has two common meanings. One, uh, it's, uh, it's 1140, uh, 40 minutes since the service started. That's time. Number two, I, I wore my heavy winter coat since it's cold out. That means the same as because, and that's what Paul is saying, because we have such a hope. Which brings up the question, what hope? In the text before this reading, the Apostle Paul is writing about one of his favorite topics, the difference between living under the Old Testament law and living in relationship with the risen Christ. For as Paul says in verse 6 just before this, the letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. Or as verse 6 of chapter 8 of the book of Hebrews says, but Jesus has now obtained a more excellent ministry, and to that degree he is mediator of a better covenant, which has been enacted through better promises. Uh, to even more of Paul's comparison between the law and the better covenant of Jesus. Quote, better covenant. Chapters 1 through 8 in Paul's letter to the Romans describes that. We act with great boldness, not like Moses, who put a veil over his face to keep the people of Israel from gazing at the end of the glory that was being set aside. Did you catch that funny little detail? Most people think that Moses put a veil over his face to protect the people from the glory of the Lord, which rubbed off on him. But uh, Paul says Moses put that veil on to keep the people from Israel from gazing at the end of his glory. Um, I got nervous about this candle. It's, well, I, now I think it stopped. But it's still burning, but burning very dimly. The, the glory sort of went out. Moses would go back up the mountain and see it again. But the glory was temporary. In our reading from the Gospel of Luke, we heard the familiar story of the transfiguration of Jesus. And while he was praying, the appearance of his face changed. And his clothes became dazzling white. Mark says, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And the three, Peter, James, and John, were stunned, terrified, amazed, knocked their socks off. If you can imagine such a thing, I mean, it, it, it's even difficult to. 
when the voice of God spoke from the cloud. Jesus went back to normal. Well, normal for Jesus. He was not transfigured anymore. And he told, he told the three not to speak of it for the world's not ready for that. So now we have the big light of Christ displayed through the transformation and the medium light of the glory of the Lord which shone on the face of Moses. So it's come time to talk about this little light of mine and this little light of yours. Indeed, to this very day when they hear the reading of the Old Covenant, the same veil is there, since only in Christ is it set aside. Indeed, to this very day when Moses is read, a veil lies over their mind. Paul back to his favorite topic again. The work of Christ is hinted at and foretold in the Old Testament, but cannot be clearly seen. That veil which lies over the Old Testament blurs what is and what is to be. But when one turns to the Lord, the veil is removed. The prophecies and promises of the Old Testament are revealed and explained. We experience freedom from sin. Well, not freedom to sin. And even more amazing, all of us with unveiled faces seeing the glory of the Lord as though reflected in a mirror are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory for another. For this comes from the Lord, the Spirit. Transformed into the same image from one glory to another. Oh, our own little transformation. Now the question is, what do we do with that transformation? Ah. Do we talk about that transformation? Are we Christ-like? Do we challenge, encourage, rebuke, console, love like Christ did? Or do we talk sports? Do we talk politics? Do we talk weather? Do we talk about other people we like and don't like? We're glowing when we leave the building. Do we put the veil on? Do we hide the glory of the Lord? Does the glory of the Lord shine only in here and not outside? We're equipped to be more than just polite, friendly, smiling, nice people. But that's a comfortable veil. We can be comfortable with the world, and more important, the world can be comfortable with us. But comfort is not one thing we're called to be. <sighs> When's the last time you talked with someone in the church about what, how Jesus is transforming you? When's the last time you talked with a friend outside the church about what Jesus is transforming you? When's the last time you talked about someone who's not a friend or a relative about how Jesus is transforming you? In admitting your faults and your need for a savior requires a vulnerability and sensitivity we're not accustomed to. We like the mask. Church, we'd rather talk about the nice building. You should come to church. We have a nice building. We have nice music. We have a nice pastor. We have a nice Bible. <sighs> What are we missing here? I... Writer and Bible historian Diana Butler Bass has a book titled Freeing Jesus. It's not the title I like as much as the subtitle. Rediscovering Jesus as friend, teacher, savior, lord, way, and presence. It's interesting that she listed friend first. We talk about a personal relationship with the risen Lord. But instead of talking about our relationship, we fall back on saying you need to read the Bible. I have a wonderful wife. Somehow I got her to marry me. I, I still don't know how I did it, but I know one way I didn't do it. I didn't walk up to her and wag my finger at her and tell her that she better marry me because she's never going to find anybody better and she's not going to do well if she doesn't marry me. And I'm really... <sighs> I don't know anybody who can be finger-wagged into a relationship with Christ. Lent is coming up. It starts this Wednesday. And we do have an Ash Wednesday service that evening. Many Christians fast during the 40 days of Lent. They give up chocolate, ice cream, television, coffee, eating meals out. 
Why do we fast? We deny ourselves because Christ denied himself. But if the purpose of fasting is to give ourselves a pat on the back when we're done, we're missing the point. Christ did not spend 40 days in the wilderness to impress us. Christ spent 40 days in the wilderness in prayer, preparing for ministry. When we fast, and it's a good thing to do, but the focus is not on what we're giving up, but to use the time to focus on worship, contemplation, and prayer. So fast if you are able and choose to do so. But prepare that for a personal ministry. To look at your mask. To look at the thoughts and emotions which you're serving as your mask. Ask God to show you your mask or mask and ask for his help removing them. Therefore, since it is by God's mercy that we are engaged in this ministry, we do not lose heart. Oh Lord, it is difficult to not lose heart sometimes. We have renounced the shameful things that ones hide. We refuse to practice cunning or to falsify God's word. But by the open statement of the truth, we commend ourselves to the conscience of everyone in the sight of God. Let us pray. We want to celebrate. We don't want to listen. We want to stay on the mountaintop with Jesus and set up a festival where everyone can come and play and have a good time. We want our faith to be one of entertainment. But you have called us to listen to him. You have asked us to be ready for the journey. We cannot stay where we are, comfortable and snuggled down in the familiar. There is much to be done. Forgive us, Lord, when we are stubborn and woeful. Remind us that you are with us wherever we are. You call us from the mountaintop to go to the valley where there is struggle and strife, where healing is needed. Prepare us, Lord, for this journey. Help us to listen to you. Heal us, Lord, for we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.
I, I guess I just have to say it one more time. Uh, knock your socks off. That was wonderful. Thank you. Let me take this opportunity to remind you that we're still not passing a basket to collect tithes and offerings. There are donation boxes on the doors at the rear of the sanctuary, and it's also possible to provide tithes and offerings online, either as a one-time donation or on a schedule. If you need help, ask the office and they will show you how. As we sit here, the lights are on, the doors are open, and the heat, <laughs> praise God, is working. You and you on TV, not leaving you out, you have made this possible through your generous sharing with us, the church, what God has provided to you. There's a song we United Methodists sing to praise God for his provision for us, a song which has not been heard ringing in the walls of this building for way too long. Please stand and join me in singing the doxology. closing hymn, while you're standing, is appropriately enough, number 526, What a Friend We Have in Jesus.
Let us pray. God, go with us. Help us to be an honor to the church. Give us the grace to follow Christ's word, to be clear in our task and careful in our speech. Give us open hands and joyful hearts. Let Christ be on our lips. May our lives reflect the truth of love and compassion. Let no one come to us and go away sad. May we offer hope to the poor and solace to the disheartened. Let us so walk before God's people that those who follow us might come into his kingdom. Let us sow living seeds, words that are quick with life, that faith may be the harvest in people's hearts. In word and in example, let your light shine in the dark like the morning star. Do not allow the wealth of the world or of enchantment flatter us into silences to your truth. Do not permit the powerful or judges or our dearest friends to keep us from professing what is right. May the peace of the Lord Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. Have a blessed week. Amen. Thank you.